Hi, this is Rob Packard from Medical Device Academy. This morning I'm enjoying a beautiful day in Western Ireland. We're just northwest of Cork. We're at a uh, castle, actually. Uh, we had taught the Amsterdam 510K workshop earlier this week on Wednesday and Thursday, and then it rained for a couple of days, our first few days while we were in Ireland. But now it's an absolutely beautiful day and we're gonna enjoy this and tomorrow in Ireland. This morning I wanted to talk to you about uh, the webinar that I have coming up this Friday, October 19th at noon Eastern Time. Um, the webinar is going to be a risk management webinar. I've taught risk management webinars in the past, but this one's going to be a little bit different because we're going to be talking about the new draft standard that was released in July and has uh, just finished the commentary period. So they'll be making additional revisions and then releasing a final version next year in 2019. In addition to that, we have the new MDR that's coming in 2020, and there are essential requirements in the MDR that are going to make things even tougher to comply with than we saw with the seven deviations in the 2012 European normative standard that was addressing the MDD deviations from the ISO standard, or vice versa, the ISO standard deviations from the MDD. So here's the things that I'm going to be covering next week. Um, or this Friday coming up. Number one, a head-to-head -head comparison between the new draft standard and the previous version, the 2007 international standard. Number two, we're going to recover the requirements of the, the essential requirements in the new MDR, and we're going to show you how those are different from the essential requirements that were in the MDD, and how there are more specific uh, requirements for your risk management documentation. Number three, we're going to go back through the seven deviations and we're going to give you a little hint as to what we expect to see for deviations in the when they make a European normative version of um, the ISO 14971 standard that's new and show how that deviates from the MDR. And we would expect that sometime probably the beginning of 2020. The uh, fourth thing that we're going to cover is recommendations for the risk management process. A lot of companies have um, have a risk management process that's set up for the ISO 14971-2007 international standard, but with deviations occurring in the European standard, the new European regulations, and the changes in this draft standard, you're going to have to make some small changes in your process. They tried not to change the risk management process overall, but there are little tweaks, the subtle changes that make a big difference in your risk management process. The fifth thing that we're going to cover are risk management tools. They've moved all the annexes, um, or most of the annexes, in the back of ISO 14971 to the guidance document. So there's a guidance document, 24971, uh, I believe is the number, that is a guidance that, for risk management or applica application of the 14971 standard. But um, there, is a, there was a guidance or an annex in the back that gave you the different risk management tools, how to do a risk analysis. Some of those were an FMEA, a fault tree analysis, a HACCP, a HAZOP, a preliminary hazard analysis. So all these different tools have a different place in your, your quality system and in manufacturing controls and in design controls. And you need to know which tool is best for which functions. And one of the complaints I have about a lot of companies' risk management process is they all want to use the same tool, or they want to uh, manipulate a tool to make it work for what they're trying to do when it's not the best tool for the job. So one of the things we're going to be discussing in depth is risk management tools and what is the best tool for the job and how to adapt your risk management process to each of these different tools so you know when to use them and it isn't creating extra work for you. And then the last thing that I want to discuss during the risk management webinar is how to document your risks. One of the challenges companies have is not only how to uh, conduct the risk analysis, but how to document it after you've done that so it can be maintained and how, it's, how it can be useful for your design process and design documentation. So those are the things we're going to be covering this Friday. Once again, the time is going to be noon Eastern Time, October 19th. That's Friday, and I'm looking forward to talking to you then. Bye-bye.